Why did Cornell Roberts leave Bonanza? Did the eldest Cartwright's son go on to have his own children off screen? And did Purnell even attend Michael Landon's funeral? Just how did Purnell, the final surviving member, meet his own demise? Adam literally built the family's foundations, and so did Purnell. So what nasty clashes with NBC execs drove him to leave? Did this lost love extend to his castmates? Welcome, I am your host, Nostalgic Nick, with the facts on Purnell Roberts including his incredible work for civil rights, and how he really felt about Bonanza, and television as a whole. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up to show your support, and subscribe to our channel so you always catch our latest deep dive. But now, without further ado, come on and let's ride! Was Purnell Roberts a baritone? Big dreamer Adam Cartwright was a man of many incredible talents that he put to good use, and so was Purnell. It didn't take long hearing him to know Purnell was blessed with a rich baritone voice, and he put it to very, very good use. How could you use? In fact, he has a very extensive music resume, the only one out of the original Cartwright Quartet to have such an accomplishment. Besides Lauren Green's Ringo, of course, but that was more cowboy talking than Purnell belting out some incredible songs. No human being could match the draw of Ringo. Ringo. In fact, while filming Bonanza, he managed to record a folk music album called Come All Ye Fair and Tender Ladies which earned heaps of praise for its uniquely soft and lyrical style. If you're lucky enough, you could hunt down a Bonanza 4 CD boxed set. It's just about the only way to get the album these days. The Bonanza box set also features Purnell crooning out the classic song They Call the Wind Maria, Rake and a Ramblin' Boy, and Sylvie, plus many, many more. It's no surprise that Purnell had a very strong musical theater background. The stage and even music and dance were his first loves. In fact, the early days of his careers were spent in operas and ballets, at one point starring in The Lovers, opposite the radiant Joanne Woodward. He did Twelfth Night, Merchant of Venice, Taming of the Shrew, I mean the guy was the real deal. Shakespearean trained real deal. And this background made him a dream addition to the Bonanza cast, but it also permanently shaped how he'd feel about work on television. And the same thing that made him a strong actor drove him away from this incredible vessel of TV. How much was Purnell Roberts worth at his death? TV shows made up the brunt of Purnell's income, and it would be the same story regarding his net worth at the time of his death. Usually that's pretty welcome news, steady and substantial income, but Purnell hated the way merchandising and commercialization got into the arts. He was one of those performers who genuinely was in it for the art, but it still ended up filling his pockets. If you like Chablis, you're going to love Folinare Suave. Purnell and his co-stars could bring in as much as 10 grand per episode of Bonanza. Add three more zeros at the end there, and you've got his real net worth of $10 million at the end of his life. Again, not a final bank account balance to leave behind, but money was the last topic on Purnell's mind. So much so, he actually walked away from quite the pretty penny because of how upset Bonanza made him. But Purnell still found ways to use the gifts that acting gave him. Not even just financial, but also the platform. The 1960s saw America on the brink of major changes for civil rights. And right at the front was Purnell Roberts. So when the Selma to Montgomery marches commenced in 1965, Purnell immediately jumped in and joined the movement led by Martin Luther King Jr. This was pretty in keeping with Purnell even at work. In the studio, he butted heads with NBC execs about casting. Purnell believed Bonanza should have more characters of different racial backgrounds, and he wanted all of Hollywood to back off using white actors for roles depicting Native Americans. Purnell's family released a statement saying, quote, On the set of Bonanza, he protested the use of all-white crews and guest stars, finding some support but never enough to satisfy his sense of outrage. All Purnell wanted through Bonanza production was to be heard. Why did Purnell Roberts leave Bonanza? 
Purnell Roberts brought his theatrical sensibility to the small screen when he joined Bonanza. Very quickly, he fully believed that television was a downgrade from theater, both because of the elite feel to stage production and because of big creative differences with the higher ups. Purnell once told a reporter, quote, I feel I'm an aristocrat in my field of endeavor. My being part of Bonanza was like Isaac Stern sitting in with Lawrence Welk. Some of the more inflammatory comments he denied ever saying, but he usually followed that up by pointing out all of Bonanza's narrative weaknesses. Purnell hated that the Cartwright boys, or men, basically had to ask dad's permission for anything. Even as grown adults and executives said they'd carefully script out each character to have a meaningful journey. But according to Purnell, quote, none of it ever happened. Even his family knew this was going to be a bad mix, or as they called it, a difficult transition. His family summed it up by saying, quote, Accustomed to freely moving from part to part, now being in a wildly popular show without costume changes. About three grown men living at home with their father. He found did not hold much creative interest for him. Well, it goes along with everything else here. Breaking horses, branding calves, everything's done with pain. Purnell brought his passion for civil liberties to the studio too, arguing for a more diverse cast on Bonanza. He also had a whole plot dreamed out of Adam marrying a Native American woman played by a black actress. But he might as well have been talking to a wall. It was never going to happen. Purnell's unhappiness was very clear because literally it wore down his spirit. Purnell shared, quote, I don't have the psychological stamina to last under artistic compromises over a prolonged period of time. I get hostile and vindictive. It wears me down. Cartwright senior Lauren Green heard about Purnell's unhappiness and gave some fatherly advice. Green told Purnell to quote, stay with the series a few more years and you'll be able to build your own theater and you will be able to hire Tennessee Williams or anyone else to write a play for you. Did that work? No, Purnell wasn't having any of it. Work was just one big fight, he recalled, quote, I fought with the powers about the scripts, character development, and other things. It got so I was upset the minute I arrived for work. That's no way to live. So, Purnell shocked everyone by refusing to renew his NBC contract just before season seven. He'd later sum up the choice in interviews by saying, quote, the reason I quit. Essentially, it was a question of human needs. I wasn't happy on Bonanza. A person should be free to choose his own happiness. He also felt TV wasn't doing what it should, and he had a pretty dramatic call to action for network executives, saying, quote, It could be used so much more for educating and informing. The industry should rid itself of its conformity and dispense with these silly game shows for adults. The way he saw it, TV was teaching everyone that money was all that mattered. So Purnell left and never looked back. Except when his father was sick and Roberts worried about being without financial support. But beyond that, his only regret was, quote, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get out of my contract and leave sooner. Ouch. Now how did this affect his castmates' relationships? Did Purnell Roberts go to Michael Landon's funeral? The Cartwrights, the executives, and the nation all felt shock when bidding farewell to Purnell Roberts for the final time. And no surprise, some of these weird emotions played out in the spotlight. When Little Joe himself, Michael Landon, did an interview with The Tonight Show in 1973, he made a crack about Purnell hating Bonanza. A fan asked if there was bad blood when Purnell left, and Michael joked, quote, No, I really didn't, uh, I didn't remember when he left. Uh. <laughs> that smells like a rivalry for sure, but their castmate, Betty Endicott, personally witnessed these two acting like brothers, even when the cameras weren't rolling. In fact, from her time on Trapper MD, Betty remembered that Landon visited the set just for Purnell, saying, quote, I turn around and there's Michael Landon. I said, Michael, what are you doing here? And he shushed me and told me to be quiet. He was there to see his mother, but wanted to surprise Purnell. During that visit, Landon made good on his promise and snuck up to Purnell, surprised him, and gave him a big warm hug. Betty remembered that it, quote, did my heart good that other people could now see that there wasn't this animosity? These kinds of things don't happen when you hate somebody or resent somebody. 
The two of them sat down and had a nice long visit. I wasn't involved, it wasn't my party, but I observed from afar. They spent a great deal of time just laughing and talking and having a big time. It's a relief things ended on a positive note, but it makes it all the more bittersweet when Landon predeceased Purnell by 20 years. But Purnell Roberts was right there to attend Michael's funeral in 1991, which also came after Dan Blockers in 1972 and Lauren Green in 1987. Did Purnell Roberts ever have any children? Purnell found peace in theater, but he did end up back on TV with Trapper MD. Even after all that time, he slammed the medium. But this time, it was different. Purnell could feel it. When asked about it, Purnell said, quote, I'll have no trouble this time. I won't, can't deal in specifics because it's a delicate area, but suffice it to say, I just know that I'm working now with those who possess a quality of individual talent I respect. Okay, point taken, shots fired. Purnell also tried his hand at marriage a few times, wedding Vera Maori, Judith Lebrecht, Kara Knack, and finally Eleanor Criswell in that order. His 1997 marriage to Eleanor ended up being the one, but sadly, romantic woes ended up being just some of the family torment Purnell faced. Purnell and his first wife had one child together, a son named Jonathan Christopher, nicknamed Chris. But tragically, Purnell lost his son in 1989 after he died in a motorcycle accident. What was the cause of Purnell Roberts' death? The sudden death of Dan Blocker we cover in greater detail in a separate video, but it made Bonanza one of the first shows to explore the death of a main character. It also struck a horrible blow to fans of this famous cast, but it would be the first of many in just a few decades. We've heard Purnell growls about Bonanza plenty before finally leaving, but at the end of the day, he had loyalty to his castmates and would invoke their memory and their time spent together on Bonanza, even when introducing himself. According to a statement from his lawyer, Purnell sometimes introduced himself as Purnell, the last one, Roberts, because he had to witness each of his castmates pass. And of course, he did attend most of their funerals, including a humble yet beautiful memorial service for his TV dad, Lauren Green. Then, January 24, 2010, it was his turn. Purnell Roberts passed after battling pancreatic cancer. The final Cartwright, with no surviving main cast members to attend his funeral. And amid this hurley I intend that all is done. It's kind of shocking to imagine the man who left such an impact on millions once called Bonanza, quote, not the most fulfilling of my life. But none of that actually disproves his fondness for the show. He loved the potential that Bonanza had. He just wished it nothing but further growth. And that's a kind of love that keeps people motivated to improve. So what do you think? What was your favorite season of Bonanza? Did you enjoy Purnell Roberts? Who was your favorite Cartwright? Did you watch Purnell on another show or movie? What about Trapper MD? Get in the comments and tell us all things Purnell Roberts and all things Bonanza. If you enjoyed our deep dive today, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss a memory. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.